What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American, here today to react and learn about the 10 best Top Gear moments. To be honest, as an American, I have never seen Top Gear, ever. So apparently, this is a very popular British show about cars. So today, I'm excited not only to see some of the best moments from this show ever, but I'm going to see this show for the very first time. I get to see Top Gear. Finally, there's a lot of hype built around this. I know this is a very beloved show, and it's about cars, right? So this is totally new to me. Let's take a look. <laughs> Number 10, Clarkson's P45. It's passed all the government tests, which means you can drive it <laughs> on the road. <laughs> I get it. I already get it. This is <laughs> that's hilarious. That's hilarious to me. Like the first thing they're like, "Don't worry, this has passed government inspection. This is legal to drive." What is this thing? It's a Clarkson Clarkson's P forty five. This is a car, not like some little spaceship. Is this? how the show kind of goes they get some crazy car and talk about it and 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 hopefully drive it right <laughs> testing out the world's smallest car in the plp50 presenter jeremy clarkson <laughs> had found the isle of man export to be a lot more practical in his day-to-day -day routine than on the roads what uh, so his name is clarkson this car is called a p45 this is the smallest Street legal car, <laughs> almost looks like a bike or a motorcycle with four wheels. That is extremely tiny. <laughs> How powerful is this thing? Okay, I, you know what? I, I, I am sold. I am totally fascinated by this show already. With so much more respect for the tri-wheeled P50, Clarkson tried to go one <laughs> better and designed a car that was even smaller. <laughs> oh! Resembling more of a Dalek than a driver. <laughs> No way. No freaking way. Look at this. <laughs> Look, <laughs> he's in a tin can. <laughs> he looks like an alien. <laughs> what the heck? This is, <laughs> this is great. I love this. Okay, okay. Uh, the six foot five presenter tested the aptly named P45 on the roads of the nation's capital before pitching the hybrid to the <laughs> dragon's den. There it goes. Uh, he actually... He actually drove this thing around in public. That is, oh, that's amazing. Bought it, of course, and the vehicle was deemed- <laughs> these, these images of him just like taking up the road in this tiny little car. Your arms are exposed, but the rest of you is like in this super mech suit on wheels or something. This is, a, this is <laughs> amazing. Vehicle was deemed too uncomfortable and too dangerous to go into production. Oh. <laughs> Number nine, Top oh Gear God. of the Pops. We don't know who to thank for this one, but we hope they got promoted on the spot. Fear not, <laughs> however, they haven't gone emo for the follow-up to the Mega X and Y. What the bloody hell does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, what? Something about emo? Um, so some of this show, it's a show about cars. But some of this, they're like in a little stage or auditorium, like doing a talk show. And then some of it is them out in the field actually testing the cars. I think that's kind of how it goes. Of Red Nose Day 2007, show producers decided to merge BBC's music program Top of the Pops with BBC's motoring program Top Gear because, oh. well, they both have the word top in the title. Now, the last time I played one of these, I broke it on the singer, and that was about 20 years ago, so I might be a bit rusty. Regardless, the hype... What? The, what? This was some episode of Top Gear. Nothing to do with cars, where they did, like, a music combo with Top Gear and another show, okay. Favorite show saw live performances from Supergrass, Travis, and the Top Gear band. Yes, the Top- The the hosts of Top Gear can actually play, like, instruments? That's impressive. Gear band. After Clarkson's early suggestion that they could set the record as the worst band ever to appear <laughs> on British television, <laughs> the trio, with Justin Hawkins on vocals, performed Billy Ocean's Red Light Spells Danger, 
Okay. One and a half times as the show's finale. Okay. What was that? I dropped the sticks. That's, <laughs> that's cool. What I'm getting here is the show is cool because of the cars, but also because of the hosts. The hosts are like funny and they have good personalities. That that has a lot to do with this, I think. <laughs> Despite the false start, it's well, not bad. <laughs> Number eight, chased out of town. As okay. was customary during the Clarkson era, the boys would be sent to different places and perform a tour, like a big tour, or as one would call, a grand tour. But okay. we digress. What is closest to their heart? I've got to get him killed. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'll be letting you down, me down, everybody down. <laughs> Why are they painting random cars? They go around to different parts of like Britain and like t they said they tour. And here they're like painting cars? <laughs> okay. During Series 9, they flew to the United States with oh. a series of novelty challenges, oh. such as driving down a drag race that finishes in alligator infested waters. <laughs> no. no, they actually did episodes here in the United States. Wow, who knew? So far, so good. However, the Alabama portion tasked them with seeing who could get the other shot, killed, or arrested <laughs> for points. The presenters <laughs> painted slogans on each. <laughs> Oh my god, so this show is funny as well. It's not just about cars and mechanics. It's funny. <laughs> They're trying to see who can get arrested or pulled over? There's cars that deliberately intended to antagonize the locals. <laughs> I'll be honest, I have felt less conspicuous than this. Hillary for president in a red state <laughs> did not go down uh -oh. well, as the team's vehicles were pelted with rocks and they were chased to Mississippi. No then way. they turned on the film crews. Hey. No way they actually wrote like political stuff on their cars on purpose to make people mad. And they got, they literally got like chased out of town, like literally. Oh, get out of there. Get out Number of there. Seven, the indestructible <laughs> Toyota Hilux. Oh. Oh my God, what? Ow! What? Toyo Ow! <laughs> what? This thing goes down stairs? This is amazing what they do with the cars. And also just some of the, the comedy too. To had real intestinal fortitude to say that their pickup truck, the Hilux, was indestructible. Oh, okay. Clarkson tried to prove otherwise, subjecting the truck to a series of destructive tests in order to, as he put it, kill it. If you reduce the- Wow, this is... I, I'm starting to understand. This isn't just like super technical car show, like the name Top Gear would suggest. This is like a lot of people can enjoy this. Um, it's it's not like that dense into the technicalities of cars. It's like very entertaining, actually. They're trying to destroy, see how they can destroy this truck or not. And <laughs> truck to a state whereby it could no longer be started or driven, then the indestructible claim <laughs> would be false. But then disaster. Oh no! No! Oh, poor the thing. The ropes tying it down had snapped. There it After goes. driving it downstairs, into a tree, into the Bristol Channel, through a production. Wait, what? They, <laughs> they, 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 they dropped a trailer on it? <laughs> you would think that would that would do it for most cars. This truck is amazing. Dropping a trailer didn't like take it out. An office and then under a falling caravan <laughs> failed. A, ca a caravan? No, the caravan got injured. Not even not the truck. Hilux was still working despite being set on fire. Dropped from a crane, hit with a wrecking ball, oh my and God. placed on a live demolition site. The car now what? rests on a plinth to honor Toyota's truthful claim. <laughs> <laughs> the lengths they will go on this show as well. They demolished a building on top of this truck and the truck still looks, the truck looks bad now, <laughs> let's be honest. But the fact that it even exists still is incredible. But did it move? <laughs> I can hardly believe this myself. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is! There it is! <laughs> no way. 
Number six, Tom Cruise's through Gambon. Tom Cruise? Tom, Tom Cruise was on Top Gear? Okay. You think we'll look at Tom's lap first, oh. shall we? <laughs> Taking time to swing round the Top Gear studio in order to promote their new movie. And Cameron Diaz, too. Night and day, Tom Cruise and Cameron Diaz found themselves strapped into the star in a reasonably priced car segment of the oh. show. The stable section of the series saw various celebrities race in an everyday car, uh -huh. at this point the Kia Seed, around the Top Gear track. <laughs> they, they got celebrities to come on the show and like do crazy car stuff. This is perfect for Tom Cruise. From what I hear, he like does his own stunts. He can like fly a helicopter and a car and like he's, he's probably quite good at this. Uh, to, of all the people to come on the show, Tom Cruise is like perfect. That's a nice gearbox. <laughs> After Harry Potter star Sir Michael Gambon nearly rolled the car on the last corner of his lap, causing the producers to name it after him. Tom Cruise also bumped onto two wheels through Gambon, really? but kept enough control of the car to pass the finish line before landing. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Tom Cruise literally went on two wheels. Okay. <laughs> Number five, H982 FKL. In 1982, a group of Argentine Marines masquerading as scrap metal merchants raised their country's flag in British-owned South Georgia Island. Okay. The incident sparked the 1982 Falklands War and has oh. had consequences for both Argentina and the United Kingdom since. Oh, okay. None were more bizarre than when filming for the Patagonia special, Top Gear producers had bought a car with the number plate H982 FKL. There's a gun. Okay. No. Okay, I'm, I'm a little confused what the numbers signify. The lists, whatever, believe that the Falklands are Argentinian, they don't like it, the, the numbers on the license plate, the H982FKL, that has to do with this, like, conflict, right? The British, and they're in the hotel. I was stuck in here, and we don't know what's going on. Despite being a coincidence, locals loyal oh. to Argentina took exception and a full-scale security effort was made to abandon the cars. This was like a, a, something slanderous or like dissing Argentina. And they're like literally in a hotel with people, with like Argentinians outside, like ready to fight them or something. And filming and get out of Ushuaia ASAP. Oh my god. Guys, everyone in the cars. As police distracted the mob, the show's convoy headed to Chile, where they found solace. Since then, the, the freaking Argentinian mob was after them or, or something for, for license plate numbers that coincidentally like triggered them. For, for some reason. I, I, I kind of understand. And Chile has been referenced frequently by the presenters as a thank you. Huh. Number four, <laughs> Out oh With my the God. Old. The most famous format of Top Gear is actually its second incarnation. The original Top Gear was also a motoring program okay. that ran on the BBC between 1977 and 2001, oh. but was quite different from the show it became. Oh. What on earth? Oh, there's an old Top Gear and a new Top Gear. We've been seeing like Top Gear 2.0, mostly. This is the original Top Gear? What is this? With the exception of the name and a powered up version of the theme tune, little else from the original series would be pitched in 2002 huh. for the new formats offered by showrunners and original presenter Andy Willman and Jeremy Clarkson. Oh, I, I wonder what they changed, because it sounds like it was very successful once it uh, rebooted into new Top Gear. There's definitely like this sitting around with an audience part of the show. And then there's like going on trips and blowing up cars. It's a, it's a really interesting idea for a show. I can see why this is so successful though. Thing is though, are you getting what you pay for? Now with a live audience, several recurring segments and a focus on entertainment, the right. new Top Gear yeah. has become one of the BBC's highest rated and longest running TV shows. Oh, it is. It's, it's literally one of the highest rated, most popular BBC shows ever. I, I see. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, they focus on entertainment. They, they talk about cars, but they also like do crazy stuff. <laughs> it is very entertaining. 
Number three, the end of an era. Oh. Here presenter Jeremy Clarkson has been axed from the show after an unprovoked attack on a colleague who ended up in hospital. What? Of course, all good. What? 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 The host? Clarkson, this host, who seems like a really important part of the show, was uh, fired for, for attacking somebody? Attacking a co-worker? show after an unprovoked attack on a colleague who ended up in hospital. What? Of course, all good things must come to an end, and the Wilman Clarkson era of Top Gear is no exception. What? What the heck? This is very random. Oh my god. I, I'd love to know the details of what happened. Why did he attack someone? Are they okay? What, what's going on? In fact, it was surprising it took as long as it did as Top Gear was often at the center of ever more scandalous controversy and really? usually at the hands of Jeremy Clarkson. Well, really? Top Top Gear was like scandalous? It was really just this person, Clarkson, who was controversial? Uh, I wonder how. I can see no alternative, sadly, to the course of action I've taken uh, today. But when mm. Clarkson punched a producer during an argument over cold cuttings being served in lieu of a hot meal, BBC bosses had had enough. Pre what? Okay. You know, he, he makes a good, like, host for the show, but that, that shows something about your character. He punched, punched a producer, assaulted a person. Because they served cold cuts? <laughs> it's it's so absurd that it's funny. Because they served cold cuts instead of hot... What? Cuttings being served in lieu of a hot meal. Instead of a hot meal. Cold... Cold cuts? You said during an argument over cold cuttings. Cold cuttings. Oh my god. That is not what I expected to hear at this point. But that's obviously a huge, huge, huge... Thing that happened to this show, so I I'm glad they included it. I had no idea. Him with his P45, the document, not his car, and firing the veteran presenter. Mm -hmm. Woolman, May, and Hammond left Top Gear after finishing the series and went on to create the Grand Tour for Amazon Prime. Oh, they made a different show without him. Yeah, I mean, you gotta fire him after that, right? Like, you can't be punching people for food. <laughs> That's crazy. What? I can't believe that really happened. Now, does the Grand Tour reference make sense? Well, probably. Thank you for watching. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much for watching. And, well, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Number two, killing the Stig. Some say he invented curtains and that he has two sets of knees. The Stig was a creation of Clarkson and Wilman after they found racing car drivers to be a little underwhelming in front of the camera. Instead, what they this? had their resident driver remain <laughs> anonymous and somewhat mysterious. They have a mysterious driver. I'm just distracted because they're driving a car on like a, a floating battleship out at sea. And unlike the pilot, the Stig must leave himself enough space to pull up again. The Stig made his debut with the 2002 reboot dressed in black. Suffering from Mansell syndrome, as in doesn't speak and just drives, okay. the first Stig was <laughs> employed to showcase sports car speeds as presenters could not reasonably drive fast themselves. Oh, holy cow. Okay, so they just got some badass to come dress in black and be the mysterious driver for the show who can do like more stunt driving. Okay, cool. The mystery driver. Sports car speeds as presenters could not reasonably drive fast themselves. Oh my god. Uh, that was not supposed to happen. What? Did they really, did he really drive into the ocean? Is he in that car? That's crazy. However, when Perry McCarthy revealed himself to be the Stig in 2003, showrunners had to drive the Top Gear Jaguar off the HMS Invincible, supposedly killing him off. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know who this person is. Perry McCarthy revealed- pa Perry McCarthy? I don't know who Perry McCarthy is. Then they had to- They revealed who he was, and then they had to kill him off, like a- <laughs> Like a TV show or something. They- <laughs> Oh no! That is all that was there. The Navy divers went down, but they couldn't find anything. 
Number oh one, the God. Stig Unmasked. The Stig! All any- the Stig! The Stig! <laughs> what, what, does that mean something, or is that just a random name? Um, this is when they unmasked him after all the mystery. <laughs> one knows is he's called the Stig. With the black Stig lost at sea, a new Stig dressed from helmet to toe oh. in white made his debut. Oh! Who here? Oh, the new Stig. This, this show has everything. Plot lines, drama, <laughs> death, <laughs> and cars, and craziness. This is great. Do you want to, to see, see that? that? <laughs> However, this Stig's anonymity also stayed in place, and no one knew the identity of the man under the mask. That oh, okay. was until 2009, oh. when, oh. after years of speculation, oh. the Stig revealed himself to be Formula One legend Michael Schumacher. Okay. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know Formula One racers. This is like a super famous, successful Formula One racer. That makes sense. That's who you would probably get for a show like this. Okay, wow, that's the Stig, or the white Stig, who came after the, the one that died and drowned. Okay. <laughs> Setting a record of 1 minute 10 seconds point 5 in the Ferrari FXX, Schumacher's reveal was then confirmed to be a stunt, as Ferrari what? wouldn't allow anyone other than him to drive their sports car. The Stig's identity oh. is still a mystery, despite what? Ben Collins being sacked for announcing that he was the tamed racing car driver in his autobiography. What? It's still a mystery. This was a... Uh, to throw you off. This was a, a ploy. A distraction that's not really the Stig. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. What a twist. Do you agree with our picks? <laughs> what a twist. Um, wow. What an interesting show. I've uh, never seen it before. I understood the concept was a show about cars, which isn't very much to go on. This was fantastic, and it actually really showed me why this show is so popular. Or I guess it's, uh, they stopped making new episodes, or they, it's probably, the reruns are probably still popular. This is a really beloved show, and I can tell why. It's got, like, everything, especially when they rebranded it, and they got, <laughs> and it's funny, and entertaining, and got, like, drama, drama somehow. It, it's got it all. Anyway, this is great. This video was by WatchMojo UK, and I enjoyed this quite a bit. That was really entertaining. I totally get it now. Top Gear. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment with your thoughts on these Top Gear moments or any moments that didn't make the cut that maybe should have. That'd be great to hear about. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Britain and British culture, stuff about Britain that I've never seen before, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.